a trumpeter swan lifts off from the tundra of the North Alaskan Arctic. An American white pelican flies from the waters of Great Portage Rapids in Alberta. An American avocet prepares to leave its breeding grounds in the marshes of North Dakota. And an indigo bunting departs the boreal forests of Maine. It's migration time on the Mississippi Flyway, where an astounding number of birds on a daunting journey converge at one unique spot, the confluence of the Missouri, Illinois, and Mississippi rivers to produce a spectacle of birds at the Riverlands Migratory Bird Sanctuary. Many millions of birds travel the Mississippi Flyway during spring and fall migration, including more than a million and a half geese, 30,000 pelicans, and 15 million ducks. Nearly 60% of all North American bird species migrate along its corridor. The rivers, lakes, wetlands, and forests of the Mississippi Flyway are ideal for birds to rest, feed, and for some to stay and nest. It's one of the greatest flyways on Earth and part of the longest migration route in the Western Hemisphere, stretching from the Arctic coast of Alaska to Argentina in South America. And the Riverlands Migratory Bird Sanctuary is at the center of it all. What makes Riverlands so special to migrating birds is that we are at the convergence of the Mississippi, Illinois, and Missouri rivers. Being within this confluence area, we have lots of birds that migrate north and south, and they use our area because it is a central location uh, in the north-south migration pattern. We have nesting birds in the summer, and we have a huge population of birds that winter here. So there's always something to see here. Situated on the Mississippi River between Missouri and Illinois, the sanctuary is owned and operated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and has been designated an important bird area by the National Audubon Society. The thing that makes Riverland such a diverse uh, and rich habitat is the different types of habitat you find here. The backwater sloughs, the main channel, the forested floodplain, and then even the prairie that you see here, this bottomland grassland uh, that was restored to mimic what was here naturally uh, back 200 years ago. The sanctuary encompasses 3,700 acres of river, islands, forest, ponds, marshes, and prairie wetlands. Miles of hiking trails weave through the sanctuary with an amazing array of prime birding spots and a water trail for paddling. Audubon centers are extraordinary because they combine a beautiful place like a wildlife sanctuary with hands-on learning and experiences in the sanctuary to introduce people to the wonders of nature. When people come out here for the first time, they are usually shocked and amazed because we are only 20 minutes north of St. Louis. This bird sanctuary and the river is so close to them. For a few months out of the year, the awesome sight of the bald eagle graces the sanctuary. Eagles can be seen soaring over the bluffs, perched in trees along the shoreline, and hunting for fish. Day to day, the Riverland staff keeps track of the eagles and can tell visitors where to spot them. That's very exciting when you see that many eagles in one location, especially since just a few years ago they were an endangered species. On a good winter day, you can uh, stand out here and count 70 just standing in one spot. 
The trumpeter swan, a native species, was nearly extinct by the early 20th century. Reintroduction efforts have helped the species make a great comeback along the flyway. Hundreds of trumpeter swans now spend the winter at Riverlands with an amazing array of other waterfowl. There are a lot of uh, species of waterfowl that move down the flyway, things like mallards and gadwall and teal and pintail. And then also we get something that's a little unique as far as the waterfowl on the river, and those are things like canvasbacks, um, lesser scop, greater scop, uh, golden eye. And people are kind of amazed at what they see. But the real bird song begins in spring with the melodious return of the meadowlarks, warblers, sparrows, wrens, and more. When a rare bird species arrives at uh, Riverlands, it draws people from, from all over the world. When we have a rare sighting, it stirs up kind of the burning community. Everyone gets excited, comes out, and takes full advantage of the Riverlands area here to see those rare species. Before the mid-1800s, the entire Mississippi River still had much of its natural character, with hundreds of islands, sloughs, sandbars, and vast floodplains. During the time of Lewis and Clark, as they were going up around the bend of the Missouri River, they saw just thousands of, of white feathers laying on the water, and they came around the bend, and, and there were literally hundreds of American white pelicans sitting on that river. Now there are fewer, but the American white pelicans are still a spectacle in spring and fall, with their 107-inch wingspans and flocking together by the hundreds. Habitat restoration efforts are helping their populations increase. Riverlands also has over 20 species of gulls, more than any other inland waterway in the nation. For years, it was Niagara Falls had the biggest number of 19 gulls. We've had 23 gull species seed here in this region. More than 300 bird species have been sighted at Riverlands. Audubon has designated the sanctuary an IBA, or important bird area, a critical place to preserve. Together, the Corps and Audubon have partnered to do more than protect the landscape. They've committed to improving habitat through restoration projects like Heron Pond. Wetlands are extremely important to the shorebirds because they have some real handicaps in their migration. Many of the most common shorebirds breed in the high Arctic and they've got to migrate all the way to Argentina. Since Heron Pond has been created, we've had 18 species of shorebirds show up and then staying for days where everybody could come out and see them. That's the value of a many shorebird habitat where everybody can see them up close and personal. Another Riverlands habitat improvement project is the restoration of the prairie wetlands. When we were developing the restoration plan for this Riverlands area, um, we started looking back at historical documents from early explorers like Marquette and Joliet, kind of identifying and investigating uh, what might have been here to kind of replicate uh, what we have here on site today. There was kind of ridges and swales in the swales. We connected some of those swales with some waterways so that we could put water in them. And we picked a, a suite of native grasses that we know were in the range of this area. So it is kind of a sense of accomplishment to see this prairie and this grassland restored to a similar state of what it was many years ago. An unlikely new habitat created for the interior lease turn is another success story. The interior lease turn project is so exciting because we didn't have lease turns um, nesting in this area since approximately 1960. Habitat has disappeared along the Mississippi River for uh, this particular bird, and so the Corps was able to put into place a barge uh, covered with nesting material to encourage the least turn to nest and breed, um, and it was successful. Now we've proven that interior least turns will nest here if they have habitat. So the next step is establishing uh, long-term natural habitat solutions for the interior least turn along the river.
Migration is yet a mystery, not fully understood. What forces of nature and biology guide birds to follow a certain path year after year, century after century? Our trumpeter swan will spend its winter along the Mississippi River. The white pelican will continue on towards the Gulf Coast. The American avocet will fly for the shores of Mexico. And the indigo bunting will eventually arrive in Costa Rica. Yet for a brief moment in their migration, they and hundreds of other species, thousands upon thousands of birds, converge here. The Riverlands Migratory Bird Sanctuary is a spectacle of birds, an ever-improving habitat, and a critical rest stop at the center of one of the greatest flyways on Earth. <laughs>